now. Here, they, but inshallah, their place is one day by the followers of Mirza becoming a Muslim and engaging with us, coming towards us, discussing with us, learning from us, and opening the books of Mirza, inshallah, those same place will become haqiqi masajid in which the deen of Hazrat Muhammad will be. For, inshallah, for inshallah. sure. For inshallah. sure, inshallah. I just want to add to that as well, what boy <coughs> Muhammad mentioned as well, what Mullah mentioned as well, the identity fraud as well. The biggest fraudsters at this moment in time, especially with, uh, we want to bring in, obviously, uh, it's our habit, we, we, we've been discussing Palestine and Gaza, um, the biggest identity fraudsters out there, not only uh, you know robbing, stealing identity, but land, uh, usurping land, um, and killing innocent people, um, children, raping males as well, as well as the females. We all know it's the evil entity of Israel, the state of Israel. Um, and obviously for the viewers as well, I want to get, um, obviously our both guests' uh, discussion on this as well, is that Bayou Muhammad mentioned in the beginning as well that you mentioned that in Australia, for example, you've got the issue of liberalism, you've got the issue of atheism as well. The youngsters are uh, trying to, you know, um, they're, they're, find, they're, they're finding themselves confused in relation to their deen. Um, the subsidiary issues, they're not really um, focused upon. Rather, they're tackling these major issues, um, you know, which is a cause of concern. But this, this, this thing that we need to, the, the point that we want to get, which I want to get out is that, as Bai Muhammad mentioned, hinted to subtly, that... The Qadianism or the Qadianis, they are linked to every single evil um, ideology out there on the face of this earth, you know, directly, indirectly. And the greatest evil at this moment in time, as Muslims, we all know uh, what's happening with our brothers in uh, Gaza and in the West Bank. The, the community, the true Muslim community that is meant to support the Gazans uh, or support the Muslims in the West Bank who are going to, you know, may Allah protect them, but it looks the way they're going to go through the same thing uh, yeah. that the Gazans are going to go through with the oppression and the zulm, but alhamdulillah the resistance is there, and we pray for them for their success in uh, removing this uh, evil oppressor uh, the, known as this, uh, the, the, the Zionist entity. So you have the Qadianis who fully support Israel in its endeavors. So you've got to understand this. This is something what we need to understand where, um, you know, we've got the scholars of the past and we had this discussion as well where um, generally, the, the mindset of the, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was that they were always opposed towards zulm. They opposed zulm oppression. They always opposed um, uh, any, you know, where, whenever the, the rights of the weak were, were taken wrongfully, they would support those individuals um, and they would take their side. You know, mm. that's why one of the traits of the Messenger of Allah was when he received Nubu'a, um, unlike uh, uh, Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani, there was no praise of him. The guy couldn't even tell. Uh, he had to have indicators on his shoes, left to right, because he didn't know which one to put on. This is mentioned in Siratul Mahdi as well by his own son. Um, but you have the wife of the Messenger of Allah saying the, the qualities of the Messenger of Allah that Allah is not going to disgrace you. Why? Because you have these five qualities. One of them was that you join ties and obviously you uh, take on the burden of others. You know, you help the oppressed. So all prophets of Allah were obviously diametrically opposed to uh, the, the the power of the time, uh, the you know the the the, the zalim at, at, at the time where you find Israel, and I want to get obviously by uh, Muhammad's thoughts on this and Mulan Osman Sahib as well, is in relation to um, you've got the evil state of Israel. What stance did Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani have towards the state of Israel? Mulan Osman did hint towards that mm -hmm. as well, um, and also obviously with your research and your background knowledge in regards to how they assist the various different evil ideologies out there um, in trying to counter the real Islam, which is mm. what we alhamdulillah follow. Mm. So if you can ex explain each other. Yeah. Jazakallah khair. Uh, just inshallah one clarification because obviously all of us when we are using the word that Qadianis are basically behind all of this fitan, we mean the Qadiani establishment. Yes. Because obviously at the end of the day a common Ahmadi working uh, 9 to 5 has no knowledge what's happening. But yes. we want yes. we want to make them aware that the resources they are providing, yes. that's where they are being used. So basically, yeah, so this is one thing I want to remember. And secondly, mm -hmm. now, I, we have not done any live stream on this topic so far, but let me, inshallah, tell this today for the first time, maybe, inshallah, live on this, uh, in, on this podcast. Mirza Ghulam Qadiani has extensively written on this topic. 
he says that Jews were justified to reject Jesus. I mean, as a prophet of, if you are a prophet of Islam, obviously you are not, but just saying this as a mafruza, you should basically, for example, Quran, Quran testifies the, the nabuwa of all the prophets, that they were truthful. This is just one sign for a common person, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani went the opposite. He is building a case for kuffar. He said that the Jews were justified to reject Jesus because Jesus was a liar. <laughs> Subhanallah. Quran yeah, Musaddi Gallima. Yeah. Exactly. So that is one thing, Mawlana, with regard to this, uh, the Jewish nation, that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani gave argument, arguments, proper arguments to prove that Jews are justified to reject Jesus. Number one. Number two is that if he was a Messiah, because he was claiming to be the awaited Messiah for all nations, be it Hindus, Muslims, Jew, whoever, bring to us anywhere where Mirza Ghulam Qadiani ever said to the Jews, hey, I am your awaited Messiah, either believe in me or you'll be doomed. He must say this, if he was the awaited one of all nations, it is by necessity he must make this claim. He never made. We should think why. Because at, at the end of the day, his title, Masih Ma'ud, the promised Messiah, there's only one community on the planet who is waiting for a promised Messiah. We don't. We don't. Because we are waiting for second coming of Isa ibn Maryam. For us, Messiah, he was the Messiah. He came. Finished. Likewise, the, the Christians, they believe that he was the Messiah. There's only one people who are still waiting for the Messiah and this title, Promised Messiah or the, the Awaited Messiah, it actually fits on the Jews. But guess what? He never said to them that believe in me or you are doomed. He actually went to the other extent. He said actually Jews of this Ummah are Muslims. He basically, sorry. No, no, no. He just, uh, we've done a podcast on Imran Hussein and his name just keeps on popping into mind yeah. as he said the same thing about the Christians Alhamdulillah we've done for, for our audience again we've done a good refutation Alhamdulillah many of the brothers of Azwal with regards to the Christians and back to obviously the, the verses of the Quran for, for like I said because of yeah. the, the little experience we have the youngsters that tune in and stuff you have to give them like a breakdown yeah. the Quran actually like when, when Quranic verses are presented to us we should not always take this as justification. Mm -hmm. Not every verse given to us, because Allah SWT has mentioned something in the Quran, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا So at times, Quranic verses will be misinterpreted yeah. to what? To deviate people from the as-sirat al-mustaqeen. Yeah. So keeping that in mind as well. So here you have, um, according to their interpretation, Mirza uh, uh, Ghulam Ahmad Qaidiani, he said that I am the, the promised individual, I am the promised Messiah, and he's saying that the, the Jews are the ones of, of salvation. Yeah. But we as Muslims, we clearly know that the only group of salvation is Islam. And this is established to Surah Fatiha. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهُمْ الْضَّالِينَ And throughout Surah Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran. Brother, if you just want to carry on inshallah. Yeah, Jazakallah khair. So basically, one of these are the two things people need to just really think about. That how come that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani is claiming to be the awaited one of all nations and never preaching to the Jews? It basically, it gives us some hint that where he's rooted, you know. The next thing, Malana, is... So that answers uh, Sheikh's question. Exactly, here. exactly. Okay. It answers the question yeah. that he's rooted somewhere because he must call them as well, but, but he's not calling them. Next interesting thing is that now, at least he was claiming that he, he is the fulfillment of second coming of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. Okay, let's look at this one. I want people to note now, please, these two things. These are, you can say, the case closed, the checkmate for the Qadiani Murabbis. Mirza Ghulam Qadiani has put all his eggs in one basket. He said, Agar Quran ne mera naam, now the world is naam, not hasiyya, no, naam. Agar Quran ne mera naam ibn Maryam nahi rakha, to mein juta hun. He said, if Quran has not named me ibn Maryam, son of Mary, then I am a liar. We have a simple request to Qadiani leadership. We want to see that Katiyud Dalala ayah of the Quran, which says Mirza Ghulam Qadiani was Ibn Maryam. Why I said Katiyud Dalala? 
when they talk to they say we want to see katyu dalala aya which says that isa went in heaven with his body and show us the world body show us the world heaven this and that at least you need to show us as well because your claim is that your beliefs are proven through katyu dalala by the way they then they define what is they say katyu dalala or the definite ayat are which have only one interpretation like kul huwa allah ahad of this nature allah is one period so we want to see the ayah as well now there are two possibilities if there is a katyu dalala a clear definite ayah in the quran which says mirda gulam qadiani was ibn maryam okay your case is proven and if it's not and it's definitely not there then who was mirza he said then i'm a liar case closed now come to christians instead of because if he was the messiah which christians are waiting for then his first job is to talk to the queen queen elizabeth of that time who was head of the church his job was to tell her look either you believe in me or you will go to hell did he say this never never he was actually celebrating his uh, birthday and what not you know subhanallah i mean people need to think about because these are those simple things because you know sometimes the discussion is lost in arabic lexicon this and that these are simple things for a common amadi if he was the messiah christianity is waiting for then his first job was to tell these people look i am the messiah either believe in me or you will be doomed to hell that's it he never said this rather he was saying that i make dua for for the malika for the queen he said i allah has look subhanallah he said allah has sent me through the baraka of the queen <laughs> now the queen is head of the church and he said i came to break the cross i mean you came to break the cross and the one who is custodian of the cross you say that i came with your blessings i mean this is this is something they hiding and that's the reason that's the reason they never ever translate the complete cover to cover books of mirza in urdu in english they will never do that because these are indefensible all well, they've translated well they've claimed to have translated quran in many languages but one more point and the video is on our channel the video it's about a 10 minute video with the references so i'm not going to repeat any reference here all is on productions inshallah this is on all the plight of the muslims in gaza and palestine what is it over first of all is it are the causes duniyawi are they for worldly you know i don't know trade routes is it for sea routes is it for minerals from the land and the earth or is it <coughs> ideological it's so solely ideological because netanyahu has quoted from their religious sources so that means it's ideological when the oppressor is using religion the place of worship of the muslims the second third most uh, uh, um, noble you know holiest place for the muslims is al masjid al aqsa when mirza is himself has the best masjid al aqsa totally mm. outlined like the rafida have done rafida claim the masjid al aqsa is in the heavens mirza doesn't claim in the heavens he's relocated it in qadian and i've given two to three references on this mm. so this is another way the qadiani cult has stopped the muslims of gaza and palestine who are giving their blood to defend it the old murabitun your 70 year old 8 year you know 90 year old murabitun who are just there and saying we stand in front of these rifles these oppressive you know these uh, uh, dictators for the sake of masjid al aqsa on behalf of the ummah they fulfilling this great fard on our we should be doing this defending our masjid but mirza himself is telling the umma forget it this hal holds no significance masjid aqsa is my masjid qadian so this is another thing that the qadianis have let down the entire umma in the plight of gaza and palestine and this is why we call upon uh, like what the others mentioned that these people just work 9 to 5 they're busy people they don't look into the my video get the references get an independent translator to translate the parts that I've mentioned and quoted from and there is no doubt any <clears throat> one if non muslims are crying over palestine and gaza then an average qadiani follower who's born into a qadiani family who just goes about his business 
who's Qadiani by association, but is a genuine seeker of the truth, mm. I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just these two, three references calling you using Masjid al-Aqsa and Mirza's rejection of Masjid al-Aqsa, which the entire Ummah has on past and present, and where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became Imam al-Anbiya'im, rejection of this, this should be enough to call you towards Islam. True. With what face can your clergy and leadership ever claim to care for the people of Gaza and Palestine when your founder, your founding, you know, imposter is claiming Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem holds no significance. Hmm. Masjid al-Aqsa is in Qadiyan. In Qadiyan, yes. Yeah, actually, I just want to add on this one because not only, uh, you know, obviously this is, mashallah, is a very good point which is relevant in, in today's time of conflict with the Jews. Not only this, he, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani's belief, now again Aqeedah, his belief is that Qadian is also Haram. Now the question is, you are telling us for last one century the Mirza was not a law-bearing prophet, not a Shari Nabi. Now Usul and Aqaid are part of Sharia. Now the question is, if Mirza Ghulam Qadiani is giving, us, giving you this belief, that Qadian is haram, like Makkah is haram, Madinah haram, Qadian is haram as well. Is it not addition to Sharia? Simple question. If it is addition to Sharia, the Shari Nabi. And if it's not, he was lying. Which one you want to choose? You have to choose one. Brother, if the other have a beautiful point on Jidhi. Jidhi. this. And this point is from Allama Khalid Mahmoud <coughs> Even if he didn't give any Qadian being a haram, himself attaching the word to himself is the Shari. Yeah. How Allah Masab mentions, we ask the Qadianis, himself calling himself a Nabi, is it necessary for us to believe in? Obviously, they're not going to say it's not necessary, mm -hmm. because then, <laughs> then that debunks the whole Qadianism. Yeah. So if it's necessary for us to believe in, you've increased one thing amongst the beliefs of Islam. Of course, yeah. And increasing one thing amongst the beliefs of Islam is greater a crime than increasing one thing in the Ahkam of Islam. Exactly. So the Imaniyat, and with the incre increasing Mirza's name, this itself is Tashri. Yes. So this whole point of Tashri and non Tashri yeah. Nabi is going down the drain. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, so with regard to this, uh, you know, Masjid al Aqsa in being Qadian, again, you know, in or if somebody, like, like Shaq said, if someone is sincere, it should not take more than 30 minutes for a common Ahmadi to, to know that Mirza was a liar. I give simple example now. Everything, for example, Mirza was saying that everything is a metaphor. Isa is not Isa, it's a metaphor. I am the Isa. Okay, cross, like you know, he will break the cross. Cross is not its metaphor. Okay, Khinzir is metaphor. Everything became metaphor. But guess what? Guess what? He said that the minaret on which Isa was going to descend, that is literal. And then he started to collect chanda to build the minaret in Qadian. In their masjid. And guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him death before the minute was completed. It means that, number one, it means by collecting chanda, he admitted that the hadith is authentic. Number one. And number two, Isa has to stand on the minute. He believed that it's, it's, an, uh, it's a must thing now. But when Allah gave him death before the minute was completed, it means that he was a liar. After Mirza passed away, his son Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud, the second caliph, he went to, uh, you know, Sham. And he basically went and he sat down under the minaret in order to say that, oh, the prophecy is fulfilled through me. The Isra descending uh, on the minaret. What a joke. And next thing is very important here. You know, I would say that a common Ahmadi who does not want to go into theology, no problem. Leave everything aside. In the religion of Mirza Ghulam Qadiani, it is a must belief, must believe that again I'm gonna quote something very filthy, but what can I do? It's Mirza's writings. I say the Nakle Kufur Kufur Nabashat. So Mirza Ghulam Qadiani said that then first of all he said that there was a nikah which took place between Joseph the carpenter and Maryam alayhi salam. That's of one thing. And then he said that if Muslims had not believed in this in the past, again, Raz, secret. He said it was historical mistake I have corrected now. That this marriage did take. Okay, then we went to the extent of saying, number one, he said this marriage was against the law of Moses. Why? 
for two reasons. Number one, it took place during pregnancy because Maryam was, as per their belief, she was pregnant at that time. And number two, Joseph was already married. So because of these two reasons, it was against the law of Moses, number one. Number two is, he said that the elders of Maryam, they knew it's against the law of Allah. He, he, he knows that. He mentioned that. And then third point is, he himself says, it was shar an najais Sharia of that time, the law of Moses. Now the question is, if you add these three things, what are unavoidable necessary implications that Nauzu Billahi Min Zalik Maryam alayhi salam was in a haram nikah which is not a nikah to begin with which was what? Adultery. Now a, a common Ahmadi has two options. If you believe Mirza was truthful in his statements then you must believe that Nauzu Billah Maryam alayhi salam according to the authentic rivayas one of the four women of this universe who perfected their religion. One of them is Maryam. Allah revealed entire chapter on her name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected her from the women of her time. All of that is for her. And now about that lady, about that blessed woman, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani believes that she was committing adultery. Mulana mm -hmm. one Qadiani, he was a quote-unquote convert Qadiani. He came on our stream. We had a discussion on this one. Then we had discussion afterwards as well. I said to him, I said, look brother, you hate us as much as you want. But let me say one thing. If on the day of judgment, when Allah will ask you that why do you believe that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani was truthful in saying that Nauzubillah, Maryam was in haram uh, relationship. Would you be able to defend in, uh, at that time? If you can, stay Qadiani, it's up to you. But if your conscience says to you, that on the day of judgment, you won't be able to defend this, then leave it. Alhamdulillah, he left. He left. So, this is, I mean, these are the things which people just need to investigate. Okay, did Mirza say this and then ask your heart, can I believe in this? If you not, if you can't believe in that, case closed, he was a liar. Jazakumullah khair, barakallahu feek. Alhamdulillah, it's been a very, very productive podcast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a means of propagation of the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a means of sincerity, istiqama, steadfastness, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a great means of us dying upon la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, having belief in the finality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and being raised with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we're going to conclude the podcast here. We're just going to give a four to five <laughs> minute segment now, inshallah, for any questions. We have brothers here who have come in to the actual live. If anyone has any questions for Sheikh Uthman or Brother Muhammad Imtiaz, inshallah, you can fire away. We have a few minutes now, inshallah, and then we'll conclude the whole live. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah. If you have any questions, brothers, please do not shy away, inshallah. Or even in the, in the comment section, inshallah, if anyone has any questions with regards to the whole topic discussed. Do any shares? The commentator said, did Mirza's uh, son believe in him? So did Mirza's sons or son believe in him? So I think he's answered that. Did all no. Or did all, sorry. As far as uh, Sultan Ahmad is concerned, first of all, obviously they are a lying cult. I give simple example. You know, after Qadian was given back to the Qadianis, they have put on the, you know, the, 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 you know, the things on the graves that this person became Qadiani in, in this, this year. There, there's no proof for that. But we know for sure about, at least for Fazal Ahmad, Mirza's son Fazal Ahmad, did not believe in Mirza and for this reason Mirza did not pray Janaza on him. We know for sure this much. Okay. Regarding okay. Sultan Ahmad, this is controversy. Okay. We so want we want to stay academic. We want to want to say something which is unacademic. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Any other questions, inshallah, brothers? Brothers in that room as well. If anyone has any questions for the brothers here, inshallah. Oh, Mirza, why? Okay, as far as uh, Hurmat Bibi, I believe the first wife is uh, concerned, she did not believe. As far as Nusrat Jaha Begum is concerned, now I would say that uh, I, I leave it to Qadianis if they want to discuss Nusrat Jaha Begum to, to us because that will be a difficult topic for them to discuss because belief is something, is something else. It's actually something 
they even don't want to hear and that's why they don't even mention Nusrat Jahan Begum in this context of belief because there was something else going on in his home. Subhanallah. Okay, there's one. Yeah, one, 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 one. Question, yeah. Sorry, Jinx. Did, did, did he really die on the toilet? Okay, look, this is unacademic to say. Actually, toilet came to him. So through his karamat? But, but, but yeah. we, we, can't, we can't put it this way. You know what we call a washroom? Were they available at that time? No. Okay. When they weren't available at the time, then what they referred to as a toilet, he died on that. Yeah. Well, if you could just repeat that again, just for our audience again. <laughs> you know, a washroom, a yeah. secluded area. Secluded, yeah. It wasn't available at the time. Okay. Brother um, Imtiaz has also said the same thing. If that wasn't available <clears throat> at the time, and it was, you'd go away, right? You would find your private space, and you'd do it. If that was the way of relieving oneself, then Mirza died on the toilet. Because the whole purpose of a toilet is to relieve yourself. Nature calls, you relieve yourself of, you know, the, the waste. Mirza died on this substance. He died by this substance. His wife, you know, is like a, basically a makeshift type of toilet. Yeah. So she had these things, you know, ready for him right next to the bed. Okay, we have another question here. Do the poor from their jamaat have to give chanda? So there's obviously, we all know about a certain percentage yeah. which goes towards the, the jamaat because jamaat is referring to the, the Qaidiani movement. Now, is this only for the rich elite individuals or is there a concept of the poor giving some form of charity towards the, the whole organization? You know, as far as my knowledge is concerned, my knowledge is limited in this area, by the way, because it's purely their internal system. So they, they never disclose this to anybody else. But as far as I spoke to few people, for example, if there are students who are having a loan for their studies, even they have to pay chanda. This much we have confirmed. Now just imagine somebody is having an amount of money as a loan, even if he has to pay chanda, what about the poor people? In comparison to Islam, where a person, ulama sitting here, yeah. who's a person in debt, there's no concept of zakat on this no, individual. No, nothing. And here we see inside the, the Qaidiani movement yeah. that even if a person, he owes money to yes. someone, he's in debt, he yes. still has to pay a certain amount yeah. in this particular yeah. month. I mean, he's a student on the one hand, he's not like earning person at this at this stage, yeah. and he's under debt, still he has to pay chanda. Well, one of the reasons why they're not happy with people leaving, as well as obviously their cause and their ideology, is a loss of money as well. Yeah. Okay. So if they've lost a doctor, they're losing, what, 50, you know, 30, 40,000 pounds a year. Because their chanda is not 2.5%, <coughs> is a large percentage, is more You're looking 10%, 15%, 20%, then they have like optional things as well. So there's a lot going on. Many different